Hi, I'm Kevin Elizabeth and I'm a wedding photographer based in San Diego and today's video topic is going to be all about the top seven mistakes that brides and or grooms make with their photos. So the first one I have to say is something that I find you really shouldn't be hiring a photographer if you do not trust them or if you are not open to listening to their advice. So I've had brides in the past do something with their timeline or just anything with their wedding plans and I tell them, hey, this isn't really going to work very well for your photos. It's not really gonna give you what you're looking for and here's what I suggest we do to kind of make that better for your photos. And if they don't trust me or if they don't listen to me, then they're not gonna get that great advice on how to better prepare their plans for better photos. So that's something that I find is a huge mistake. If a bride or groom is not trusting their wedding photographer, then they're not going to be open to their advice. We usually have your best interest at heart. We're not doing this for ourselves. We're doing it for you. So if we're telling you that something is not going to be so great, or if we're suggesting that there's something else we could do that might be better for your photos, really trust us and listen to us. Um, and then if you don't want to take our advice, that's fine. Just listen and know that there are consequences to things, whether they're a big deal or not. Um, sometimes we just say, hey, if we make this small change to your timeline, we're going to get you know better bride and groom portraits, or we're going to have better timing for sunset photos, whatever it may be. So it's something that I find if couples aren't willing to listen to the photographers, if they're not willing to kind of work with them to make sure that they have the best possible photos, then that's really not a great thing. Now, the second one is kind of involved with planning as well as stuff that happens on the wedding day. And that is not being able to delegate things to the bridal party or to your planner. So I've had some brides who are really called up in wedding day logistics on the wedding day itself. They're so distracted, I can't get them to get into their dress when it's time and we run out of time and then we lose time from other things. So it's kind of just this spiral effect. So I've also seen where a bridesmaid's dress kind of snapped and people were trying to sew the zipper back on while well, the bride goes in and she's helping do it. Don't try to help. Let other people help on the wedding day, whether you're the bride or you're the groom. Just if something happens that's a problem, delegate it. Your bridal party is there for you. Those are the first people you should ask to help you with something. Or if it falls under your planner services, ask them to help, especially in the weeks leading up to the wedding. Now, if you just have day of coordination, you're probably not going to be able to get as much help as you would if you had month of or full service planning. For full service planning, you're gonna get pretty much anything you need within reason. But if you are day of, just know that you might have to rely a little bit more on your bridal party to do things because the planner that you've hired for day of coordination might not cover things really far out. But on the wedding day itself, delegate to people. If you need water, if you need something, ask somebody to get it for you. It is not rude, they're there for you. Whenever I have a bride who's being pulled in a bunch of different directions, whether people are asking her to do stuff or she is trying to do all the things for everybody else and herself, she's nowhere to be found. I cannot get her to get back to the makeup chair. I can't get her to get into her gown. I can't get her attention for the family photos or the groom, whatever it may be. I'm trying to find them. We're wasting so much valuable time on just trying to wrangle people. And that is really frustrating for my part because I know that because of these things, we're not going to have as many photos or we're going to have to rush, or maybe we can't go to as many locations for bride and groom portraits. So just delegate to people to let them do things so that you can just relax, enjoy the day, and be there to be photographed for things you need to be photographed with. Another thing that I find to be problematic and things that couples don't think about, so it's not necessarily a mistake, but it's more something that they are just aren't aware of, is that especially if you have a large family or a large bridal party, you need to tell them ahead of the wedding, hey guys, this is what time we're taking photos. Please be sure to pay attention to the photographer. Be there. Do not wander off until you are officially released by the photographer. Because I have had so many weddings where the family or bridal party were not prepared. And even though you would assume it's a wedding, they're going to have to take pictures. Some of these people are nowhere to be found. And what happens is that somebody else from the group leaves to go find them. Well, then we can't do the photos until they get back. We have to make do with whoever we have. We're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. You know, I'm trying to shoot little things in between just 
just to fill up the time, but it is really frustrating because it can draw things out, especially for bridal party and family. The more time you spend on those that you don't have to is less time that you have for bride and groom portraits, which for most of my couples is some of the most important parts of the day for them because they want a lot of beautiful photos together. So make sure that you are telling your family and bridal party, do not wander off, do not ignore the photographer, make sure you are listening and paying attention to whatever he or she is telling you because the better people pay attention, the nicer they are to me, the more respectful they are of what's going on, the faster we are done and the closer they can get to the bar. So that's a great motivation for a lot of people I know, but basically nobody wants to be standing around staring at the camera for half an hour if I can get it done in 10 to 15 minutes if everybody is ready to go and really, really gracious and listening. Another part of that is to be kind. I have had some family members in the past of different couples or sometimes bridal party where maybe a bridesmaid or a mother or something, they're not being very kind to me. And I don't really like that. <laughs> I like when people are nice to me because it really creates this very comfortable vibe for everybody. So they are more accepting of the things I'm suggesting to them. They trust me. I have had situations where I go into a bridal room. I'm taking pictures of everybody. I'm kind of getting them warmed up and I have my processes for it. And there's always a bridesmaid without fail who's like, oh, this is so awkward. This is so weird. Guess what? It's not. <laughs> it's really not. There might be a few strange moments at the beginning, but I'm going to start doing things that get you guys going and once somebody says this is so awkward or this is so weird it brings down the mood of the entire group you have all of a sudden killed a lot of the confidence that I have worked so hard to build up in my couple and the rest of the bridal party so just let everybody know to be really nice to just have fun tell them your photographer is gonna take care of them tell them not to be negative tell them to be on time and tell them to be nice and everything is gonna be so much better for everybody. Now usually the first two hours, maybe two and a half hours of the day where I have arrived is spent on shooting details, which I'm going to be talking about that in an upcoming video when I talk about the tools I bring with me and what I want for my couples. And then I'm also working on candids and then bride getting into the dress, that sort of thing. So I spent a good chunk of the wedding day in that getting ready room. And one of the things that I talk about in my book, which is a bride's guide to a picture perfect wedding, is exactly how to choose a really great room to get ready in for the wedding. You do not want a dark room that has no windows. A lot of times venues, especially more affordable venues, have these bridal rooms where they're basically a dark dungeon with really terrible overhead lighting and it's just not great for photos. It's a lot of black and white photos coming out of that because the colors of the lights might not be great. There's no windows or even sometimes I will have a hotel room with dark walls, dark furniture, and the darker the stuff in the room, the less light is reflected around. So if you were able to get a hotel room or a bridal room that has lighter colored walls, more windows, it's going to give your photographer a lot more light to work with, which I find is very helpful. Now I can usually work in most situations. If it's a really dark room, I might have to bring in flash. I don't want to do that because that doesn't fit the style that I want for that part of the day. But again, just choosing a better getting ready room is going to help you out. It's also going to help out your makeup artist. They're going to be able to see everything better. If it's really dark, they might have their own light, but it's never exactly like natural light. It's never exactly how it's going to look outside for the most part. So I really recommend getting a better getting ready room, even if it means spending some money on it. A lot of your photos are going to take place there. So do not skimp on this. You can even show your photographer some photos of the space you're thinking about getting and ask them what they think. They might say, yeah, that's great. Or they might say, mm, let's go somewhere else and even ask them for recommendations. Depending on where you're getting married in San Diego, I can tell you a lot of different hotel rooms that have perfect lighting and a lot of space too. Sometimes rooms are cramped and if you have an entire bridal party in there, plus a photographer, maybe plus a videographer, plus your parents, that is very tight. In those situations, I usually end up taking all of the details to a whole different space because I just cannot work with people on top of me, people in my light. When it comes to portraits, one of the biggest mistakes that I see couples making is being extremely inflexible on locations. So they might say, I wanna take all of my pictures in front of this tree. 
well, what if that tree has really hideous lighting during the time of day that we can take pictures? And it's not gonna be flattering, it's not gonna look good. A lot of times the camera just cannot pick up the full range of light that we see in person. So sometimes you really just have to move out of a certain spot to get the better shot. Or sometimes there might be things distracting in the background that we see that couples might not notice, or perhaps there's going to be some sort of color cast. So just to keep it really simple, if there was a green wall right next to me and light hitting it, or just any soft light in general, that's gonna cast green back onto my face, and that is not flattering. The same thing happens with grass underneath the chin. Basically, any sort of strong color in light is going to reflect onto the skin. So if you are next to some crazy orange funky wall, that might not work. So just don't be completely dead set on a location, be flexible, or what if it rains? You're gonna have to move. So it's great to have some ideas that you might like, but be flexible and know that if the light's not great there or if the space isn't good enough to fit your entire bridal party, whatever it may be, your photographer is trying to make the best decisions for you. They're not being selfish or controlling by suggesting a much better spot. That's part of their job, is to guide you through this process and make sure that you have the best work that you deserve. So again, just don't be dead set on something because things could change, it might not be the best. Be agreeable to what your photographer suggests. Maybe you can get a couple shots in that location that's not so great, but the bulk of your portrait should be somewhere with really great lighting and a great backdrop that really suits what your wedding is all about and what you love, but your photographer absolutely knows best what's going to work. One thing that I see at least two to three times a year is a bride who is so concerned with not getting dirt on her dress that she basically refuses to take pictures in what always happens to be the prettiest locations for light and backdrops. This has happened to me several times and it is really tough because I'm not gonna force a bride to go somewhere she doesn't wanna go because she doesn't wanna get dirt on her dress, but also she is missing out on really beautiful locations for photos because she is very, very dead set against getting anything on her dress. And I'm gonna tell you, your wedding dress is going to get dirty. It might get torn, it might get ripped, it might get stains on it. It is going to get dirty by the end of the day, pretty much no matter what. Um, I have seen somebody with an all indoor wedding who never stepped foot in grass, dancing on the dance floor, a guest stepped on her dress and it ripped part of it off and she said, hmm, whatever, and she went back to dancing. That is a fantastic attitude to have. I know that that sounds like a scary problem, but what are you gonna do about it? You've gotta relax and enjoy your day. You cannot spend the whole time on your wedding day worrying about your dress getting dirty. You should probably plan on dry cleaning it anyway, whether you want to sell it or keep it in a box under your bed for 50 years and never touch it. Whatever it may be, you should definitely at least plan on dry cleaning it, so it really should not matter that much if you get dirt on your dress. Now, I'm not talking like a whole bucket of mud spills on you. That's pretty bad. And that's hopefully not something that's going to happen to you. But getting the bottom of your dress a little bit dirty, even before the ceremony, is honestly not that big of a deal. No one's going to see it. The camera is really not going to pick it up that much. I promise you it is not as big of a deal as you think it is. No one will really notice. And it's just not something that should keep you from doing amazing photos. So if you hired a photographer that you absolutely love and you love their variety of portraits and that's why you hired them, do not not be so stubborn about going to the places where they suggest because if you're saying I'm only going to stand in this one spot and I'm not going to move well you're not going to get a great variety of photos that's all you're going to get and after the wedding day that is not the photographer's fault again they cannot force you to do something you do not want to do so if you are super concerned about getting dirt on your dress and because of that you refuse to go into really cool locations or you refuse to walk in it because you can't walk in your dress then definitely just be aware that you are going to have a very, very kind of monotonous look of photos. You're gonna get a couple different angles, but you're not gonna have the variety that you could have if you were more willing to go into places that might get your dress slightly dirty. Now, a photographer is probably not gonna make you walk through the mud, but if they're just asking you to walk on grass, just pick up your dress and do it carefully. Like It can be done and it is absolutely worth it. The last thing I wanna say is that one of the hugest mistakes that couples make when it comes to their photos is not giving their photographer enough time. 
I need time to create beautiful work. If you give me five minutes for bride and groom portraits, I can tell you that all you're gonna get are a couple shots of the two of you looking at the camera and nothing else, because that is the first thing I start with because that is the main shot that you need to get. But if I only have five minutes, I don't have time for walking shots. I don't have time for beautiful candid moments. I don't have time for a variety of poses. I only have to work with a little bit of flow through the posing that you're already in in five minutes. And sometimes people do not warm up very quickly. So this is one of those things where if you don't give the photographer the time that they're asking for, or at least meet them in the middle, they're not gonna have the time to produce the beautiful work that you hired them for. Same with bridal party and family photos. Your photographer knows how much time they need. They've done this hopefully several times, so they know best the amount of time that it takes for them to complete their job. The planner does not know how long it takes them. You do not know how long it takes them until they tell you. So if you are a couple who is fighting your photographer on the time they're asking for, and it's not unreasonable, please, please, please consider giving it more time because that only helps you. It's not for them. It's for them for you. So if I have an hour for bride and groom portraits, I cannot even begin to tell you how many amazing varieties of poses, locations, moments, candid shots, pose shots, that I can get on that hour. We can get so much amazing stuff with that, but if I only have 10, 15 minutes, I am really working on a time crunch and I'm going through as quickly as I can to get the main key shots, but I might not have time for a full variety of super creative stuff. Now on the flip side of that, definitely listen to your photographer. If you have scheduled like an hour for family photos, they probably don't need that. So listen to them when they tell you how much time they need, because sometimes I need less time than what a couple gives me or what a planner gives me. I typically don't spend more than 15 minutes on family photos because my couples want to be spending more time on bridal party and most importantly, bride and groom photos. So I encourage them to keep their family photo list to maybe 10 to 12 groupings. Each grouping takes about two to three minutes, sometimes a little bit less if everybody's paying attention. But it's one of those things where I might say, hey, I need less time for this. Let's put more time here. Um, that's just something that's quite important to listen to your photographer, give them what they need to give you the photos that attracted you to them and that you hired them for. So those are the top seven mistakes that I see brides and grooms making with their photos. I hope that this is something that encourages you guys if you were kind of doing one of these to see the other side of it, see that we are here to help you and make sure that you have the best possible photos from your wedding day. If you guys want more tips like this, I have several in my book, A Bride's Guide to a Picture Perfect Wedding, which is linked down below. I also have a video on it if you would like more information about what's inside. But that book is gonna be incredibly helpful for giving you guys tips that are gonna give your photographer the best possible situations and logistics to work with. See you guys next time, bye.